Hi, and welcome back to Deep Six Wrestling. I'm your host, Jess Pat, and this is another episode of Five Matches to Watch. In this series, I give you my personal five recommendations of matches that happened over the past week from across the world of pro wrestling. The only stipulation is that there can only be one match per show, so not an entire New Japan show, not an entire WWE show, not an entire AEW show. You get the point. With that being said, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below to Deep Six Wrestling for all of your wrestling content, whether it be reviews, results, news, rants, whatever. Uh, and also be sure to go follow us over on Twitter at Deep Six Wrestling. We do live coverage of Raw, uh, Raw SmackDown 205 Live and all pay-per-views from both AEW and WWE. So whatever your kick is, also New Japan. So uh, yeah, whatever your kick is, we have it. So at Deep Six Wrestling on Twitter, be sure to go follow us over there. And with that being said, let's get right into this week's video. Coming in at number five this week, we have Shane Thorne versus Bronson Reed from this week's NXT. And this is kind of a showcase for both guys. Bronson Reed coming off of his pretty good run in the NXT breakout tournament, making it to the set. I, he made it to the semifinals or finals. I, I don't know. I've been a bit behind on NXT TV, but Saul's first match was pretty impressed. Looks like a good guy. Uh, Marvin Allo is calling him NXT's resident thick boy. That's a thing. Uh, he made it to the semifinals. Uh, correct. So... Because uh, finals was Cameron Grimes versus Jordan Miles. So semifinals for Bronson Reed, but did not win. Uh, and so now he has this match with Shane Thorne, who seems to be his new character, is trying to beat everybody who was in the NXT breakout tournament because he wasn't in the tournament. And he hates the breakouts. So that's his character now that TM61 is in the thing, which is cool. I always thought that he was going to be the breakout between him and Nick Miller. So glad to see I was kind of right now that Nick Miller's over in chaos in New Japan. But uh, for, as for the match, it was, it was pretty good, you know. Um, I've never really seen Shane Thorne as a singles guy, like, wrestling-wise. I never, like, have seen many singles matches of him. I thought he's always had a good look and good personality, but I'm glad to see he's finally getting the chance. He has a lot of charisma, and he just has a swagger about him when he comes out. And throughout the match, he really, I thought he portrayed that well. And uh, for Bronson Reed, you know... He's a big guy. He's a again. I said I like his look. I think he has a pretty good look, and I just I think these guys really clicked for the match they had. It wasn't anything like special. It wasn't like the greatest NXT TV match of all time, but I think it's a good match to go watch if you want to see two guys who are most likely going to be bigger stars in NXT as it becomes a two-hour show on the USA Network. Uh, probably in like the mid card. I could see them eventually both going for maybe the North American Championship. I don't really see any of them out of those two being future NXT champions, but maybe North American champions for them, I could see. I don't really, I feel like Shane Thorne has a better shot at that, to be honest. I just, I feel like he has the better, like, singles champion look in current day NXT, or current day WWE for that matter, but, uh, yeah, if you just want to see a, a good, a good showcase match, I feel like this is a really prime one, and probably one that people aren't, haven't seen. If you didn't watch NXT, and if you did, you probably just skipped uh, if you're not watching the whole show and you just want to watch, like, the main event, you saw Matt Riddle versus Killian Dame, which, again, was a good match, but I feel like this is probably the more important match to see, um, just, just as a, as, like, a look at future stars, you know? So, uh, that gets my number five pick this week. Nothing too special, but a nice showcase for two up-and-coming talents in NXT. Coming in at number four this week, we have Eva Lise versus Diamante from Ladies Night Out 7. And frankly, I have no idea what this promotion is or what the show is. As from the research I've done, uh, it's it's an all women show, which that's cool. I don't really know where it's based out of, or or I guess I mean there's been seven shows, but I don't really know what the backstory is here. But somebody I saw it online, and it happened on August 17th, so it does fit the criteria for this list. But, uh, yeah, uh, this was really good. I've always been a fan of Eva Lee since her run in Lucha Underground with, who was she with? Uh, Son of Havoc and Angelico, I think? Pretty sure it was Angelico. Um, or was it Jack Evans? Jesus. It's been so long since I've watched Lucha Underground. Anyway, uh, but Eva Lee is now headed to AEW. She's officially signed, I guess, and is debuting it all out in the Casino Battle Royale. And I really think that's a really strong get for her. I was kind of expecting her to sign with NXT, but that didn't happen. And, you know, I really think that would have been a very strong get for their women's division, which is going to need some... <sighs> They're going to need to make some big moves here. Because once you lose Shayna Baszler, you're going to lose a very big star there. I mean, you have Io Shirai, you have Candice, 
Uh, you have Dakota Kai and Tegan Knox when they come back. But besides that, you're kind of looking on the weaker side. Like, they have other people, but a lot of them aren't. They're still really green. So I really think Ivelisse would have been a very strong get for them. But that's not the case. So, you know, uh, you, you win some, you lose some. But she's now headed to AEW. I think that's a great addition to their growing women's roster. So good for them. And Diamante, uh, I actually don't really know much about her. I know she was in TNA for a while. I don't ever think I saw a match of her in TNA when she was with LAX. But uh, from what they said on, in, in the match on commentary, uh, I guess she had like a career-threatening injury with her knee or something because they kept mentioning that she had a knee injury at one point and had just gotten back from surgery and she had a knee brace on. That played in the match, part of the storytelling, which is really nice. But uh, good to see she's healthy and back wrestling. Good, good for her. Congratulations, Diamante. Uh... But, uh, yeah, this match is really good. You know, uh, again, like I said, don't really know much about the promotion, but uh, the two girls had an excellent match together, so props to them. Uh, again, like I said, Ivelisse is just fantastic. I think she's really a future star. I honestly wouldn't be shocked if she wins the Casino Battle Royal just as a big debut thing. If, if they see her as the star that she could be, then that's a great, great opportunity to do that. I don't really know who else I see winning that right now, so time will tell. We got another week, but, you know... Anything can happen. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about this one. I highly recommend this. I'll put the link down in the description because it's free on YouTube completely, the whole thing. Uh, Title Match Wrestling posted it. They might be the people who uh, run the show. I, again, I don't really know anything about this, but there's a, a bunch of matches that happened on the show. Uh, Renee Michelle, Drake Maverick's wife, wrestled on it. So I guess she's not signed with WWE, or I, I don't know. Uh, but... Again, Ivelisse is great. I really recommend watching this match just so you can get a taste of her before she debuts in AEW. And Diamante also delivered great in this match. And don't know what she's doing, but hey, uh, AEW or NXT could sign her and she could be a big star for them. So uh, Diamante versus Ivelisse from Ladies Night Out 7 is definitely a must watch. All right, coming in at number three this week, we have Daniel Bryan versus Buddy Murphy from SmackDown Live. And if you've been watching any of these videos or you just know me, you know I really like Buddy Murphy and I'm a big proponent of the, the new Daniel Bryan. I mean, it's not really new anymore, but his heel run has been spectacular. I think it's really reinvigorated him. Uh, it's Daniel Bryan, you can't hate him, but I really think that he wasn't getting stale by any means, but just like his heel turn completely changed the way you look at him as a performer. And I think that's great. Um, but this match was fantastic. Buddy Murphy, back-to-back -back weeks with two excellent TV matches last week with Roman Reigns and this one with Daniel Bryan. Two of the best in, in the world, really, if you want to get honest about it. Um, but I really, I'm very happy for Buddy that he's getting this push. Uh, even if it just gets scrapped in three weeks' time, at least we can all look back at this and say, hey, Buddy Murphy had these matches we're happy we got to see him. I really hope that's not what happens, and I hope Buddy gets a sustained push, even if it's... I don't really know what to do with him right now, but uh, find a way. Just just don't let us down with Buddy. I don't know what to do with him either once this is, this whole storyline's over, but uh, life finds a way, so maybe they'll find a way. <sighs> but this match, uh, some really great stuff here. You know, uh, Daniel Bryan, again, I think that guy could have a great match with a broom, and watching this match, it really made me want to see him versus Zack Sabre Jr. again, so I really, or not again, but, like, it made me want, it, it gave me that feeling again of wanting to see that match, so I do hope one day maybe that happens. I don't know how, uh, just New Japan uh, send a Zack Sabre Jr. over to WWE for, like, one match just so they can do it and do it in, like, NXT, so, you know, just, yes, um, but yeah, this match, some really great stuff. Buddy Murphy's fantastic as well. Again, I can't give the guy enough praise personally. I think Murphy's Law is one of the best finishers in WWE. Uh, so, or all of wrestling, honestly. I, I very much enjoyed that move. Um, especially because he can kind of hit it out of nowhere. If you've seen him in 205 Live, you know he can just bust that out at any time, which is real nice. So, yes, I think these two, but their styles clashed very well here. They meshed together, and it just... It was very good throughout. Again, this is TV match, so obviously there's like a there's a commercial break, and so you don't see like a decent portion of the match. Like for this one, you don't see like one third of the match. And from what I know about going to like a TV show uh, taping uh, for this, it's kind of just you know rest holds at that point. And there's occasional like actual wrestling, but a lot of it's just rest holds, so they don't like go through the match while it's on. And that's fine. Uh, I really think it helps on TV that, like, we don't see the rest holds part. It makes it feel much faster paced. Um, but, again, this match is just, it's so good. And, and again, I really, good on WWE for back-to-back -back weeks giving Buddy Murphy these opportunities with two of their top stars. 
and it, it's nice to see him get the rub here. So uh, I, I'm, I can't be more happy right now, although I will say I think SmackDown was a very bad show this week besides this match. I enjoyed Raw significantly more. It, like, I, I, I don't want to rant here, but, like, SmackDown felt like a four-hour show. Raw felt like it was two hours. It, like, blew by. SmackDown's pacing was terrible this week. Like, I just don't even know. The whole thing with Kevin Owens, like, going and crying to Shane about the money, it just completely... It was a no for me. I, it just felt very strange and forced, and I don't know what they're doing with this character, but it kind of felt like a character assassination for Kevin Owens. I get they're trying to make him the everyman, uh, but that was not needed. Um, just, just please don't just completely retcon that next week and have him go back to being like badass anti-hero Kevin Owens because God knows I, uh, we do not need to see him groveling to Shane McMahon about money. Uh, no. Um, but yeah, upside to SmackDown completely. Buddy Murphy versus Dan O'Brien. If you didn't see SmackDown this week, go find this match. Go watch it. Don't care how. Just go see it because you're going to see a very bright future star in Buddy Murphy. And you'll get to see Daniel Bryan wrestle fantastically throughout. So it's a win-win for you. My number two pick this week is L.A. Park versus Jimmy Havoc from MLW Fusion. And truthfully, uh... I'm pretty new to MLW, and I have no idea what's going on here, but, you know, commentary did a good job, I guess, to get me up to speed. There's some stuff with Conan and Selena De La Renta, who is L.A. Park's manager and now Jimmy Havoc's manager, where he has her phone and there's some stuff on there or something, and he's holding it over her. And so he wanted this match to happen between Havoc and Park, and this match happened, and... This was really good. Uh, this was, again, I'm not like a big deathmatch wrestler, and yeah, this wasn't really a deathmatch. It was just a really hardcore street fight, I guess. Uh, but I was I was enthralled the entire time. These guys had great chemistry. Uh, L.A. Park's entrance is really fun. Uh, I'm sure if this was like a pay-per-view or something, if it was in a slightly bigger arena or if they had more production value, it would be awesome. Uh, but I really enjoyed him coming out with the chair and playing his guitar. Great stuff. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly and him, that would be fantastic. Just, you know, make my dreams come true. Um, but yeah, this was really fun. Um, I really want to get into MLW. Uh, it, their product looks really good. Um, especially for like a, just a random indie. I, I feel like they've been around for a while. Um, but I've never really watched them. I've never gotten into them, but I'm trying to get more into them. So we'll see. This match got me hooked. So I'll, I'll probably, I've heard go watch like Battle Riot. I don't know if it's like Battle Riot 1 or 2 uh, to like see if you're into it and then get in from there. So I'll probably do that soon. Um, but yeah, this match was really fun. It was a nice, very fast-paced, just street fight brawl. Uh, I didn't even know if it was announced as that. I, I, I'm just... I just finished watching this, but there there was some there was just so much going on here. There was a bunch of table spots. Jimmy Havoc was just like clattering him with trays, maybe? I don't actually know what they were. They were like black and they were they looked like they were metal. I don't know what they were. Uh well, LA Park hit a corkscrew moonsault um onto Jimmy Havoc, and he also hit this spear that was god level spear that man is a big guy and he just like ran through jimmy havoc onto chairs there was a power slam on chairs this was great again it wasn't like blood it wasn't this crazy bloody affair where there's just like you know it's not like old czw where there's like needles going into people's cheeks and like saws and everything this was like if AEW's gonna have like a hardcore like division or anything with jimmy havoc and like joey janela and darby allen this is what it should be you know not like over-the-top brutal stuff it's just like stuff that you like casual fans can still enjoy or or just like non like czw fans can still enjoy but there's some crossover where because there's like a staple gun in this one uh, but yeah uh if you haven't seen mlw ever before uh it's all on youtube which is really nice it's easy to get into and there's some there's some pretty big names over there and there's some again there's some AEW crossover so if you like some of the guys from AEW, a bunch of them appear over there. So it's definitely a plus side there. Um, I don't really know what else I can say to get you to watch it. I, I really think it's a th good thing uh, that it exists and that it's on YouTube. I think it's good for wrestling fans that want more wrestling in their lives and more, I guess, different wrestling. I don't really, again, I've seen like one or two shows, so I, I'm not probably the expert you want to listen to on this one, but... It was, it was a really enjoyable match, so I'll definitely say that. And I've really heard good things about Selena De La Renta as a manager and a talker, so uh, she only cut, like, a really brief promo at the end here, so still haven't gotten to see much of her, so I'm looking forward to getting back into this and 
just kind of like catching up and seeing what I can find out about her and her group, which is, who is it? It's Jimmy Havoc now, LA Park, and somebody else that I don't know. Um, it's another masked wrestler. Uh, I just don't know who it is. So uh, again, if you know who it is, just comment down below and correct my dumb ass because I don't know what I'm talking about. But yeah, this match is really fun. Again, it's it's different than anything else on this week's list. So highly recommend it if you just want a really fun uh, just street fight because that's what you're getting here. So uh, MLW uh, Fusion on YouTube. Again, all free. Go subscribe to them because yes, it's more free wrestling. That, so why wouldn't you want it? And last but not least, for number one this week, we have the 10-man elimination captain's challenge match from 205 Live this past Tuesday. And again, I'm a 205 Live purist. I love the brand to death. And there's been rumors that it might be getting canceled. I truly hope that's not the case because it is, in my opinion, WWE's best weekly show. So please, you know, hashtag save 205 Live, whatever you need to do. We need to keep this thing alive. So, uh, yes. But anyway, this match, it was a big match, so bear with me. Uh, it was 50 minutes straight through. It was the entire episode. It pitted uh, teams uh, with, it was Team Gulak with Drew Gulak, Tony Nese, uh, who else was on that? Mike Kanellis, Arya Davari, and NXT's Garza Jr., fresh off the, uh, the NXT breakout tournament. And then it was Team Oni Lorkin with Oni Lorkin, Umberto Carrillo, Jack Gallagher, Akira Tozawa, and NXT's Isaiah Swerve Scott, also fresh off the NXT Breakout Tournament. That's a lot of people. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I really just, there's so much to talk about here. Uh, Isaiah Scott's theme song, I will continue to say for the third time in this series, is an absolute banger. Uh, I Please release it, WWE, because it is so good. It's so smooth, and his entrance is so good. His Titantron looks great. Yes, uh, so much yes to this. Um, just the, the team makeups were really nice. It was cool to see Scott and Garza get the rub here and getting called up for this. I really, I, I, if 205 Live sticking around, I would love to see them and Raul Mendoza, who made an appearance two weeks ago. Uh, I would like to see all three of them stay on the brand. I think they would be really good additions to, you know, still fill the holes that were left by the uh, call-ups of Ali, Cedric, and Murphy. So, uh, yeah, definitely bring those three back and continue to bring them back. Just call them up fully if you really need to. Um, but yeah, uh, there's so much. This, again, this is a 50-minute match, which is pretty unheard of for in, in modern-day WWE. They're not modern-day WWE, but like current, like the past. I don't know if there was a match in the past, like a, a match. Well, you know, I guess Survivor Series kind of gets close. But uh, yeah, so I guess the, the closest comparison here is Survivor Series. Again, it is five-on-five -five elimination, so but not pay-per-view. So I don't know the last time there was a non-pay-per-view match that was over 45 minutes. Uh, so, but anyway, this match was really good. Um, I thought some matchups in this match specifically were good. Gulak and Swerve and Garza and Carrillo, since those two are really like cousins, they really played well with each other, both those pairings. Um, I also thought Mike Canales looked really good here. I'm very happy that he's getting a sustained push and is still a character and he's not been forgotten about, so that's nice. Um, Umberto Carrillo continues to shine. I really think this guy has a very bright future in wrestling. Even if he, like, if he ever leaves WWE, I think he can be a star really anywhere he goes. He has such a good look and charisma out the ass and just brilliant in the ring so this guy has all the tools to be a star uh and there was a lot of story to, like cross storytelling here there was callbacks to tony niece and drew gulak's feud uh you had gallagher and akira tozawa feuding you had gulak and swerve story back from uh three or four weeks ago when they faced each other on 205 live uh you had uh Carrillo and garza going at it for like familial reasons you there was just there was a lot going on here uh, Davari and Oni Lorkin have problems, Oni Lorkin and Gulak, uh, yeah, I just, there's a lot going on here, and there was, it was, it really worked well, again, they, it, it added to the match, I feel, because there was, there were stakes involved, you know, of seeing these feuds come back, and, and even the ones that, like, are in the past, so, it, it really worked well, I think this match is probably, again, <laughs> like, uh, there was a string recently, where 205 Live had, like, three, ma like, WWE Match of the Year contenders. You had Chad Gable versus Jack Gallagher, two, uh, Gulak versus Swerve, and Maverick versus Kanellis, and now you have this one again, 
and I feel like this is probably out of those three matches or those four now this is probably the best match so this is definitely probably going to make it onto my match of the year list this is so good from start to finish there's just so, oh, it's so good um I think Swerve's probably the MVP of the match I really do think he shined here and I think the fact that they gave him like a backstage promo after the show talking about how he wants to come to 205 Live I I hope to god that after Lorcan and Gulak are done feuding, that Swerve officially comes up to 205 Live and is the next Cruiserweight feud. I think that'd be great for the brand. And I think it'd be great for Gulak, because it gives him a new face-to-face. -face. Yes. Um, Nigel McGuinness. Nigel McGuinness was also a star here. His commentary calls throughout were fantastic. Uh, my personal favorite was when... Uh, team Lorcan was going up with Gallagher's umbrellas, and they all jumped on to uh, Team Gulak, and <laughs> Nigel just yells, it's raining men, hallelujah. Uh, that was great. It felt like a Mara Ronaldo call, but Nigel doing it, and it was really nice. Um, it, it got a laugh, of, a laugh out of me. So, um, But this match, again, action-packed throughout. It would take too long to break down everything here. Uh, I'm not going to spoil who wins because that would take away from it and uh, especially for an elimination match where it's like a very long match um but yeah so if you haven't seen 205 Live this week go watch this it's again it's the whole episode so I don't need to tell you where it is uh it just kicks it right off there's also a couple times it cuts backstage like not cuts but like a picture in picture backstage for some story purposes um, but yeah, highly recommend this match, highly recommend 205 Live, you know, and uh, hashtag save 205 Live in case the show is getting cancelled. But that's my number one pick for this week, uh, so thank you for joining me for another episode of 5 Matches to Watch. Be sure to hit the subscribe button down below to Deep Six Wrestling for all of your wrestling content, leave a like on the video. Uh, as I mentioned, the Diamante vs. Ivelisse match and the LA Park vs. Jimmy Havoc matches will be down in the description, I'll link them just because they're on YouTube for free, so you can go check those out. Uh, be sure to go follow us on Twitter, at deep 6 Wrestling. That'll be right below me in the video, and also down in the description. And yeah, uh, I'll see you next week for another video in the 5 Matches to Watch series, but until then, peace.